us to back into the orange bowl, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like accidentally fall into the orange bowl and then just get our cheeks clapped by Wisconsin again. Like that'd be embarrassing, man. Or the Gators. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Could you imagine? Could, Could you, you imagine? imagine Kyle Trask would do. <laughs> Could you imagine if the Gators put up 50 points on us in the orange bowl? In our own stadium. Yeah, and and the thing is, like, dude, with how our defense is playing versus Florida's offense, I I think we could compete with them. I, you know, I think we'd show up. I think we're mentally tough enough that we like, you know, just like last year, right? We, we showed up and we played a better game against Florida than probably anybody else that whole season. Yeah, and I think we'd do that again. But, dude, our our deficiencies on defense would not be good for the way that Florida's offense is humming right now. Oh my! I, I mean, I I, uh, I watched the Gator game last weekend, and I'm like, wait. And we have a, we have an explosive offense, but that offense at you at Florida is yeah. is insane. I mean, we, we you just got to give it to Trask, man. Trask Absolutely. is so good. He's a baller. He's really good. And yeah, I mean, I saw I saw a video earlier in the year of him and Derek King and and some other quarterback throwing and and. I honestly thought to myself, like, man, Trask throws the best ball out of those three. Just okay. the way it comes out of his hand, like, it's it's a rope, man. He's, they would, I mean, he's going to the NFL for sure. Oh, he's a first rounder. Yeah. He, he he is very good, but I mean, my bottom line is, yeah, we're not, we're not winning convincingly, but just like Gabby said last Friday, I mean, we'd rather I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty, and so, yeah. but and even even if we're not you know, blowing these teams out. Like I, I have to remind myself all the time, like, wow, we are seven and one right now. There yeah. have not been many times since the early two thousands where at, at this late in the season, we have a record like that. I mean, you have it's, 2017 and yeah. then you have 2013. I think we started seven and zero. Um, yeah. besides that, one. You there, Marsh, you cut out a little bit. When was the last time we were in this position? Yeah. I mean, you're right. And I, I think the problem, and myself included, because this, this is my biggest problem, is I think as Canes fans, we all have PTSD, right? Like, things don't go well for long down here, um, at least in recent memory. And, you know, even in the 2017 season, like, we went 10-0, and but really we all walked away from that season, like, feeling disappointed, even when we started 10-0. and and for good reason, right? Because we just completely fell on our face and gave away three games straight, um, yeah. including one to friggin' Alex Hornibrook in the Orange Bowl, which I still am bitter over, but whatever. Um, Ugh, I was at that game and I was so mad. Well, I was <laughs> so angry. Yeah. Watching Horny us. Oh, dude, he picked us apart, man. And, and, like, that's kind of how this year is feeling to me. And and I just don't want to walk away from this year and be like, man, like, I, I don't, I just don't want to walk away is with a, nine wins. Is the next question. What was that? Yeah, sorry. We, we're we having some uh, technical difficulties, I think. Um, I was going to say, what is the next question? Okay. Um, let's see. What's going on with the ACC championship game and what do we need to happen to get in? Um, so, dude, honestly, it sucked that Notre Dame won, uh, beat Clemson. Yeah. That was not good for us. No. Um, so, essentially, what we need is we need Notre Dame to lose two games or we need Clemson to lose again. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't think Luckily. either. Yeah, neither of those are happening, dude. So, I don't know. I, I think right now, I, I think we kind of got to give up if on the ACC. What was if, that, Mark? If we assume and we finish 10, people are mad that we're not, like, that they're, the people are calling this season a failure because we don't get to Charlotte, but we still have a 10-1 record. Because you know that would happen with Canes fans. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> I I wouldn't th I mean I I know I just said that you know my goal was to get to the ACC championship game. However, if we go ten and one and we don't get in, like I feel like we took care of business, right? 
and and the like the cards just didn't break our way. So I wouldn't be mad about that. Yeah. Because the I only mean, way you could you be 10 wins that yeah, like if you go one loss and your only loss is to a number one Clemson, like you can't ask for more than that. So if we don't get in, that's, that's just that would bad. Be amazing. I don't care. Little technical difficulties, it happens. It happens. And so what were we talking about? Um. Oh, we were talking about going ten and one and not making the ACC championship game, which I'd be fine with. Yeah, that's. I mean, you can't control that, dude. Like yeah. we can't. We can't make Clemson beat Notre Dame. So <laughs> you know. Like uh, I don't care, and, and we're not we're not as good as either of those teams anyway. So no, we're really not. Um, I, I, people are just they just need to be more grateful. Damn it! Um, <laughs> right. Just be happy. I mean, just realize where we were last season and in December, and think about where we are right now. I mean, yeah. think about the class that we have and the kids that we have coming. Like we got James freaking Williams coming. We got Leonard Taylor, and we are building something. At Miami, so um, I, I think we should all take confidence in the fact that, like, I, I know Manny kind of can get flack for being a politician or a salesman or whatever, you know, but his plan is is working so far. Like, everything is going according to the plan that he has laid out publicly, right? He said that we're going to get some good culture guys in the locker room, um, that these recruiting classes are going to be full of talent and like good character, and they have so far. So. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Okay. What is next? Okay. Um, what is the one thing that can be most improved in this time off? <laughs> um, I'm. Uh huh. It's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like we are who we are at this point. Honestly, I'm not yeah. sure that there's much that's going to change. Um, you know, I, I feel like our offensive line has showed that, you know, maybe they, you know, our offensive line has regressed a little bit. Our defense is who they are. Like they are a bend, don't break defense. It's going to give up a lot of opportunities to the opposing team. Um, and honestly, they're, they're putting us in like the position where we just have to outscore other teams. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, it's just a weird team because the offensive line as a whole has, you know, they've very, they've been up and down, man. Like I think Zion Nelson has is really playing well. I think Corey Gaynor is playing well. Our defensive line is getting it together. Jalen Phillips and Roche are literally tearing it up. But yeah. then you have Bubba Bolden who's struggling. You have Al Blades Jr. who lost his starting job. Could you believe yeah. that? That was surprising. I I will say that to Corey Couch earned it, but I it was still surprising nonetheless. Well, would you have – in the off season, or even after the UAB game, if I would have told you that midway through the 2020 season, Ja'Cory Couch would be starting over Al Blades instead of someone like DJ Ivy, would you believe me? <laughs> Honestly, I would believe you more than if you told me after the UAB game. If you told me after the UAB game that that happened, I would be floored. But in the off season, I kind of had no expectations for our, our cornerbacks. Well, I, I mean, I haven't really been re-watching the games just because I've been busy. And th- has Blades really been playing that bad? I mean, here's he he has been turning his head around. And, and that's that's been a problem for a lot of our dudes. You know, like we saw, I mean, we saw that early in the season with, uh, with DJ Ivy, right? Yeah. And, I mean, Couch struggled with a little bit. Like, that's that's kind of been a, a recurring thing. Um I I don't know if I'd say that Blades has been struggling so much is like I feel like Ivy and Couch are just playing better. Mm-hmm. You know? Because because we've kind of lacked a star at corner. Um I feel like all of our dudes I mean I'd probably give that position group like a like a C plus, maybe a B minus on the year. Um Yes. I don't know. I, I, I just feel like I feel like Couch and Ivy have elevated their games to the point that like Blades was just sagging behind right now. Now I, I wouldn't say that he's been terrible. No, yeah, he, he he's definitely not terrible, but yeah. I guess the big drama going around the last I'd say forty eight hours, did did you see Al Blades' tweet 
or whatever he sent? I did. I did. I mean, I was on my honeymoon, so <laughs> like I wasn't I wasn't uh, really plugged into Twitter, but I saw the drama that was going on. Well, I, cause I'm blocked. What, what did it, he, he blocked me. So what, what like long, what along the lines was it saying? So it was something, I, I man, I, I can't even remember it well enough to paraphrase. It was something that might lead people to believe that he was upset about his role in the football program. Um, you know, and then he claimed that it wasn't even about football, which could be true because it was very vague. You know, so there's a chance that he was talking about friends or girls or whatever, right? Like, it wasn't explicitly about football. Um, but I don't know, man. Like, it, it wasn't bad enough for people to start dogging him. I, I didn't really get that. Like, there was a lot of people that were going after him and tagging him and stuff. And, like, mm -hmm. like until there's news, like, well, first of all, never tag players in negative tweets. They're oh, my gosh. Guys. That is one of my biggest pet yeah. peeves. Yeah, they're not professionals, man. Like, and, you know, and, and I don't even tag professional players in negative tweets, really. Yeah, it's not like, what are they going to do? Like, what are you going to do? Like, getting a, a back and forth with Tom Brady or, like, what, yeah. like, what are you, what are you hoping? Mean, like, the only exception is Gordon Hayward, but nobody else deserves <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, yeah, I, and people started, like, DMing me and goes, like, oh, Blades is gone. I'm like, why, why do we like to yeah. speculate about everything? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as I know, Blades is not gone. There's not like, that's a nothing burger. And in the way that I view it, like, let's give the kid a break until there's genuine news. Like, I'm, I just don't really want to like, you know what I mean? I'm not going to fuel that fire at all until there's genuine I, news. Like, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing going on. Like, uh, he got benched, you know, like it probably sucks. So let's give the kids some yeah. space to be upset that he got benched. Yeah. And, and come back and, and play better. Like don't yeah. use this as a positive. Right. Like it sucks getting benched. Like it probably felt like crap, <laughs> you know, who wants to get benched? Mm -hmm. So, well, I mean, and especially like, cause blades is different than a lot of other Miami players just because of his family history and everything uh -huh. like that. So it, <sighs> It, it it sucks, but um, because Patchen was the same way. Patchen was a legacy, and yeah. but you got to play the best guys, and you got to give it up to Corey Couch. He is sure. a baller. Yeah, Couch. It's I mean, you called it, man. Couch has has been our best cover corner. Ivy has really played a good a good season as well. You know, especially considering where where the year started for him. But dude, Couch, you nailed it, man. He's our best cover corner. So I think to answer that question, like what can we do to, um, you know, to improve during this time off, I think it's just stay focused and don't don't let the record go to your head and know yeah. that, you know, like as of right now, we are I mean, we are planning on playing the rest of the season. So don't get it out of your head that, you know, there's still work to do. Yeah, I, I would agree, and and that kind of goes with, I guess, what I'll say is that we need to, like, recenter, refocus, like what you're saying, because we need to stop playing down to our competition, because one of these weeks we're going to lose. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of beating Pitt by, what was it, five points, uh, beating Virginia Tech by one, beating, you know, NC State by three or whatever. I can't remember the exact totals, but, like, I'm tired of that. We're better than all those teams. So we are, we are. But what I keep telling people is that I I knew that like I I know that this team we're not a top ten team. We're maybe yeah. in the fifteen to twenty range, and I was expecting close games. Maybe I wasn't expecting like a five point win over Virginia, but I knew Pitt was going to play us tough. Virginia Tech usually always plays us tough. That's why I predicted us to lose. Yeah. And NC State on the road at night, like I knew that was going to be a tough one. So, but. We, we are winning these games finally. I mean, yeah. think about it like two years ago when we go up to Boston College on a Friday night. Clearly, we are better than them, but I knew we were going to lose that game. Yeah. And like, so. I'm, I mean, I get you, but dude. We're learning how to win. I, I get you, but man, three of those four games are backup quarterbacks, Marsh. Like, like yeah. I just want to pull my hair out. It's like, yeah, if they're full strength, then, then okay. But really, four in a row and three of them. Our backup quarterbacks is like, give me a break, guys. Yeah, and like, you know what? You know what's I, I I'm not surprised that those games were that close. Like it did not 
it, it would it shocked me that we won by 13 at Louisville. Yeah. Yeah, I just, man, I, I, I feel like 